Desmos page. You want to log in. So you're going to Desmos, but make sure you log in. You have to log in in the upper right hand corner because you want to save your graphs, guys. So you need to make sure you are logged in when you do this. You can access Desmos calculator without logging in. And we're not doing an activity, so let me fix this. I know y'all tend to go to, I don't know what this is. Let me undo that. Let me close this. Desmos. Okay, you know how you tend to usually go to classroom at the top? Okay, we don't need to do classroom. You can click math tools, but basically we're clicking graphing calculator. Okay, so I need you to click where it says graphing calculator. If you don't see that, you need to raise your hand so I can help you. Because we're going to add our equation into the calculator. All right, so if your cursor is over here, on the grid and you right click and hold down it lets you move the graph to any section okay if you right click and hold down or left click excuse me and hold down it lets you move it okay now a couple things if you need to change the actual graph like the grid you have these icons over here on the right in the upper right hand corner the first one when it looks like a little wrench that is the graph setting, okay? If you click on that, you'll get some options of how to change your graph. So I need you to do this because one of the things you need to have on your graph is your X and Y axes titled, okay? So right now it says grid. If I click that, I take the grid off. If you don't want to show the grid, you have that option. If I click here, I take off the X and Y axis numbers. I want them on there, though, guys. You want that there. And what you're going to do right here, like, you can change your X and Y value based on, excuse me, let me go back, sorry, based on typing in the range of those values for X, or I could just slide it. So it doesn't really matter on that. But what we're going to do right here is just add a label. So for your X axis, you need to click in that box where it says add a label, and you're going to type in hours worked or number of hours, okay? So we're going to type in hours worked or number, number of hours, okay? So... Once we have that in, it's already there, and it should show up at the bottom of your graph right here. Hours worked, number of hours. If you want to just put hours, okay, that lets me know these are hours down here. But you need to title your x-axis. All right, so then we're going to title the y-axis. So you have to put the cursor in the box and click so we can type in the box. So what does the y represent? If x is the number of hours, what is the y? Yeah, money earned, okay? So we can put money earned. You can put, you can tile it if you want to, your gross pay, okay? Because that's basically without any deductions, that is your gross pay. But you need to title your y-axis, all right? Now, all you have to do is click out to the right, it'll close it. You should see gross pay or earned and hours here. Now, if I ever had to like zoom in or zoom out, that's the plus sign. The plus sign zooms in, the minus sign zooms out, okay? All right, so what we're going to start off with is putting in our equation for our, um, our summer job. So what you have to do right here, there's a plus sign right here. You click on that plus sign, and a drop-down menu comes up. So I need you to do this, guys. And what should we pick? We're going to pick expression. I'm going to check these today, that everyone gets one graph done. Okay? So you need to do it with me. And I'm trying, if I'm going too far fast, 
Just raise your hand and I'll slow down. All right, so we're going to do y equals whatever equation you had on that paper that you showed you worked out that needs to go on this line right here. The example I did with you was 11.35x. And then we should see that line automatically on your graph. So the equation you have on your paper needs to be the equation on line one. Now, you have some options. You're going to have to do some things to, to professionalize your graph, to color code, to make it visible. Okay. So if you put the cursor over this little circle that has this white line in between it, and if you right click and hold it down, you have an option that pops up for your line. Do I need to show that again? Move your cursor so it's over the circle, right or left click and hold it down. Just click the cursor or click the, the, the mouse, uh, the, the pad and hold it down. And it'll, oh, this option should pop up. Okay. This gives you an option to change the type of line. Like I can make it a dotted line. I can make it a dash line or dots as lines. I can change my color. Okay. If I want to make it a different color. There's that line. I can change how thick I want the line. So like this is 2.5. Let's say I want to make it 4.5. And so it just makes the line bolder. So that's your options to designing or changing your line. Okay. All right. So if what I'm showing is the equation for our summer job and our gross pay, then we need to also put show graphically how to find my product and the hours I need to work for that product. So if you were to look for a solution, who remembers how to find, like what do you need in order to see a solution on a graph? What do you need in order to find a solution on a graph? That's it. Uh, be, uh, what do you mean an intercept? Like intercept here? Yeah, two intersecting lines. You need two intersecting lines to show a solution, okay? So what you have to do is you have to put in two lines so we can get to your solution. The first line is your summer job. The second line is your product, the item that you're purchasing, okay? So think of your third product. When I mean your third product, this product is between 50 and 100 bucks, all right? So you have that product in mind. What we're going to do is in line two right here, click on this line. And we're going to say Y equals, and we're going to put the cost of that product. The product that is between 50 and 100 bucks. All right. Um, let's see. Craig, give me your product. Gas, how much? 60. All right, so we're going to put 60. All right. We're going to just hit enter. Now, right now, we don't see that. I don't see my second line, which should be red, because my graph only goes up to 10. If you scroll, like if you just drag, we can get to where that happens. Or if I use my mouse and then zoom in, look what I'm doing. I'm just zooming in. There is that line with the 60. You need to move your graph so that you see both lines and see that intersection, because the intersection will give you the solution. Okay, so what you're going to do right now is put your cursor and click where they intersect, and it should give you a point. Say that again. I put the product, the cost of the product that was between $50 and $100. No, I just have two lines, my summer job and the product. Okay. All right, guys, write the point down. You need to record, like, write this on your paper because I'm going to show you how to put it on the graph so that it stays. So, like, mine is 5.286, comma, 60. If you put the cursor there and click where they intersect, it should show you that point. So you find your point, write it down on your paper, okay? Because what we're going to do 
is we're going to use, we're going to actually label this point as my product. I'm going to give it a name and a color. All right. So go down here to line three. And we're going to do the order pair of that point. Open parentheses. Put the order pair for your point. Mine was 5.1286 was mine. No, 286, sorry. Comma 60. And then I'm going to close the parentheses. And what should happen is you should get an option that says label. Okay. Once you put that order pair in, you should get an option that says label. I need you to see that. Okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to click that box, meaning it's going to put that point on the graph. And we're going to label that point as the product. Craig told me this was gas, so I'm just going to label it gas. That point represents my gas that I have to buy. Okay? You label it whatever it is that your product was. Okay? Now, what you have as an option is you see how you have this circle and it's green? Just like with the line, you can change the color of that point. So if you hover over that circle and then click and hold it down, you have options. To change the point, to change the color of the point, let's say I want to make it red, okay? I can change, let's say I want to make this 12, make the point bigger, okay? I can make it an X instead of a point. I can open circle, okay? You have options here. I don't know what this one is. Let's, see. let's make that one. Oh, it just makes the, the round a little bit bolder. So you can change your color. I want mine to be a solid line. Let's go back to let's do purple. And there's a and the coloring in the table. Uh, uh, the labeling is the same color. Okay. So we should have two lines and a point. But for the purpose of our graph, we want just to see our line for our equation, for our job, and for our point. Yes. So the point will be. Uh, what was the point? I don't know. Where did your lines intersect? So, like, the very first thing we did was come over here and find that intersection. So, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn this off. And what I did first was come over here, find the intersection, and click where that point, where those two lines are. And a point came up for me. And I wrote that point down on my paper. Do you have two lines? Yeah, two lines? Do you have the intersection of those two lines? Zero. Okay. What I need you to do, the only last thing you have to do, guys, is you have to turn off the line that represents the product. So all you have to do here is go over here, Hover over that circle that represents the line. Click on that, and the line is turned off. So you should see only the line and only your point. Only your line, only your point. So this would be an example of the first product. So we need to save this graph, guys. You need to do a graph per product, and eventually we're going to get you to get all products on one graph. Up here in the green at the top says save. When you click on that, it gives you an option to title the graph. This is for product, I think this is product two, right? No, yeah, product three, because it was between, was it, what was the price range for this? 50 to 100, okay, all right, so this is product, this is product three. Product two is between 10 and 50. <laughs> There's two products for each price range. One and two are 10 and 50. Three and four are 50 and 100. Five and six would have to be 100 to 500. And seven and eight would be um, 500 to 1,000. Yeah. So this right here is my product three. So just title it product three example. Because everyone did the one of the product threes, okay? Then you just hit save, 
Okay? And so now you have access to this. <coughs> and you can get to your graphs. Like, so if I want to do a new graph, these three bars over here opens the graph. And you have the options for a new blank graph, the current graph, or other graphs that you have saved. So if we go to a new blank graph, okay, go to a new blank graph. We're going to put our summer job equation first, y equals, mine was 11.35x. You put whatever was on your paper. And then we're going to do another product. Let's make this between 100 and 500. Okay. So hopefully you've already found a product that's between 100 and 500 dollars. Yes or no? Do y'all know what I'm talking about? About the range? Okay. All right. So, Juan, give me one of your products. That's between 100 and 500. Does anyone have a product between 100 and 500? My own shoes. shoes. What were they? Y equals 200. This is his shoes. Okay. So, because we put this equation in, right now, my graph only goes up to 6. I don't know where yours is tomorrow, but you're going to have to go down until we get or zoom in. So, I mean, I'm just zooming in till I see 200 on my graph. You see what I did? Okay. Once you get that product in, you want the intersection. So you click where those lines intersect, and you should see a point. So the first value in the point is your X. That's the number of hours you would have to work to purchase the shoes for $200. In this example here. So this is 7.62, right? One. So think about this. Like, you, you know, I know you're going to sometimes you work. A little bit over time or a little past, but like we're gonna need to round that. Does that make sense? Like you could round that to 18 hours. Because okay, like once we get to or maybe uh 17 hours and uh 45 minutes. Like if you had 0.75, then that would mean 45 minutes there. Okay. But you need to round it based on the time. It's either an hour, an hour and a half, an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 45 minutes. Yes. Mine says 26.923. 26.923. Yeah. Okay, so if it's 26.9, then I really need to work how many hours? 27. 27 hours. Uh -huh. You can say 11, or you can say if it's 0.75, then it's 10 hours and 45 minutes. Okay. All right, so. All right, so this will help you do your graphs. Now, now that we have this, I got my point. I need to write that down. Write it on your paper because we're going to add that point in line three. Yes. And there it is, and I want you to make sure you label it. So you have to click the label box. And he told me this was shoes. Okay. Were they a certain type of shoe? Uh, Jordans. Okay. So I'll put Jordans. Okay. You need to label what that point represents. Are we okay on what the expectation is? So for your graph, though, I only want to see your summer job and the point that represents the point, the, the item. So make sure you turn off the second equation. Yes. Click the box where it says label and type in the, the item, the name of the point. All right. So everyone know how to snippet a graph into a document. Okay. Because day two asks you to make a copy of the graph that you did on Desmos and put it into the document. All right. Now. I want you to work on graphs first because some of you still, I think, have not finished your products. Like day two is timestamp for today by the end of the day. 
So once I start putting it, because I'm going to update the day one grades, I need to do that first. Yes. Day one was yesterday. Actually, it was Friday. What What about, what does the substitute have to do with an assignment? It was, but when I came in class yesterday, only two of you had it done. So that's why I gave you another day. Today, by the end of the day. Yes. You said you're up Yes. All right.